God. Good to see everyone tonight for this, <clears throat> I believe it's the 21st faith explosion, 21 years, amen, and uh, they just keep getting better and better. I believe this is the best one yet, amen, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, and you know, the... Uh, the big reason for faith explosion in the very beginning <clears throat> was for it to be this set time that we come together every year and we focus on the things of the Word of God for, and it used to be even longer. We used to have uh, 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 five nights, four nights, excuse me, and uh, now we didn't shorten it for any other reason than just that's what we felt we should do, but the point is that you're giving your time to the Word of God. And not only that, but you're coming together as believers around the Word. Amen. And so today we were, of course, meeting with the alumni of the Bible School and, and those in the ministerial fellowship. And we were talking about activating our purpose. And uh, <clears throat> tonight uh, is our night of giving. And we're going to look at some things from the Word of God concerning this. Let's go over, first of all, to 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. And this is where we'll begin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, from the beginning of the year, every year for the last number of years, uh, we have... Uh, of course, had our Vision Sunday. In January, we'll have Vision Sunday. And you'll remember the three things that we're, every year we're looking at is what we want to give. Number one, in, in the night of giving. Number two, uh, uh, a desire that we have, something that we need to take care of, debt, other things such as that. And then thirdly, if you'll remember, uh, uh, it'd be nice to have, right? Whatever it may be. And so there they are, praise God. Boy, they're fast, aren't they? We're, we're grateful for good people back there, amen? amen. They're fast, praise God. And, uh, but so all year, uh, most families have been asking the Lord, what do I want to give in this night of giving? And it's a, it's a holy time, it's a holy place because the offerings of God, and that's what they are. You know, people make a mistake, and pastors make a mistake when they teach their people that they're giving to the church. You're giving to the Lord. Amen. When you come and you put money in the container, you're giving to the Lord. It's God's offering. All right? And what I've learned over the years is that people have to be taught and people have to be instructed on how do we approach the things of God. Right? I remember when I, when I was a boy growing up, of course, I grew up in church, and, uh, you know, just simple things, and some of y'all will remember this, but, you know, you had church clothes. Uh, oh, that's a foreign concept to many, I understand, <laughs> but you, you had church clothes, and you didn't wear those. Matter of fact, in our house, the quickest way to get a whipping was wear your church clothes to play. <laughs> Amen. Mainly because my mother didn't want to go shopping and buy anymore. But, <laughs> right? And, and, you know, we called Sunday what? The Lord's Day. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Amen. I mean, when I was a boy growing up, most of the stores weren't open on Sunday. And I know in the age of enlightenment that we live in, you know, well, you know, it's just another day. No, according to Scripture, the first day of the week is the Lord's Day, according to Scripture. And this is what we live by. It's not a legalism, it's an honor. Those who honor me, I will honor. And when you say, for instance, with a Sunday, you say, Lord, this is your day. 
then that, 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 that puts you on a level where the largest percentage of the world is not because it places you in a place where you're honoring God. This is your day. Amen. So when, when, when you begin to understand that, and, and there's so much teaching and we should teach on it. I've, <laughs> I've had a lot of persecution for teaching on it. You know it. We should teach on prosperity and God wants to bless you and God wants you to be abundantly supplied, completely filled. Uh, God, God wants you to be rich with the things that, that are in the world. He doesn't have a problem with that. But here's the, here's the issue. When that becomes what it's about, then the honor aspect leaves it. Right? Because you can work hard enough to make yourself rich. There are natural investments that you can make to make yourself rich. When you give an offering to the Lord, it's a symbol of honor. And I'm told that, you know, if something in the Bible is mentioned, you know, if something in the Bible is mentioned, uh, would you think it's important if it's mentioned five times? Right? Or 20 times? How about 100 times? You know, we're told that the subject of offerings are mentioned over a thousand times in the Bible. You think they're important? Now, religion will say, well, you know, finances aren't that important. Really? Try living without them. Run down to your gas station and tell them, well, you know, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ and finances aren't that important. Fill it up. What are they going to say? If you got cash, you can prepay. Uh, other than that, we need a card. <laughs> they're, 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 they're important because it's something that Jesus died, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it's something that Jesus died to put in place. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake... He became poor so that you, through His poverty, might be rich. Is that right? Now, that a believer will say, Jesus was made sick with my sickness. Jesus was made sin with my sin. Jesus was made poor with your poverty. Why was He made sick with your sickness? So you could be healed with His health. Why, why was He made sin with your sin? So you could be made righteous with His righteousness. You... you if, if you take one aspect of redemption and you don't take all of it, you're going to be lacking in your life. Amen. So 1 Samuel 2. Did you ever find it? And verse 29. And this is when the prophet has come to Eli, the priest. And he's reprimanding him for the conduct of his sons. And uh, notice, if, if I can give you some background, we'll start in verse 29. The Bible says that the, the you can read this all through chapter 2, that the sin of these two sons of Eli was very great. Well, what, 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 what was the problem? And people will say, well, they were committing adultery with women. Well, yeah, that's, 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 that's an issue. That's sin. But what God is specifically referring to is their treatment of His offerings. Because they, were going, they would send somebody around to the people that was going to offer a meat offering, and they would take a, a little fork, and they would run around and stick it down in the pot and, and pull it out, and the man would say, wait a minute, you know, that's not ready yet. And, they'd, and the Bible says that they would either say, you either give it to me or I'm going to take it. And it says, thus they despised the Lord's offering. In other words, that is just something to fill my belly. It's not anything important. Amen. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, that's not me. Uh, tell your other neighbor, say, no, that's not me. Amen. Put, put one hand on your heart, lift the other hand to, to the Father and say, Father, I'll never dishonor your offerings. Hallelujah. Notice what he says here, verse 29. The prophet says, the Lord says through the prophet, Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering? Now the word kick 
It's not so much what you think like kicking a ball. It means to despise or to trample. And, and notice the phrase that the Lord uses through this prophet. My sacrifice and my offering. Do you think that's important to the Father? He says it's mine. Right? This is so important I call it mine. And he says the problem is that you have here, Eli, is they're despising and trampling my offerings. And then he goes on, he says, and you honor your sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings. There's that word again. All the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Honor carries this idea of weightiness, heaviness. In other words, if I honor you, if I honor your word, it means that your word carries weight with me. If I despise your word, it means it carries no weight. I take it lightly. Have you ever been around anybody that you, you had to take whatever they said, like my mama said, with a grain of salt? Never knew what that meant. Right? Right? but it meant you don't pay much attention to what they're saying. But there are people in your life that their word carries weight with you. And you honor their word. Amen. And he says, those that honor me, well, what's he talking about? In what area are we honoring? Offerings. Those that honor me, where these offerings are concerned, I'm going to honor them. Oh, glory to God. How many want God to honor you? I, I, I want God's honor in my life. A amen. Say out loud. I want God's honor in my life. I want God's honor in my life. Amen. And so he says you kick and you despise and you trample my offering. Those things that are dedicated to me. Amen. See, the subject of, of giving and, and offerings. Now, we're going to go through this part about honor. It's, it's going to get a little lighter, I promise. But the, the point is, is we, we go through this, this idea of offerings and givings and giving. And for a lot of people, their giving is just another budget line item. I want to make sure it's in the budget. Well, it should be in your, in your budget in the sense that it's in, and it holds an important place. But you don't lump God together with the light bill. Right? If, 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 if you pull out your budget, the first line item should be God. Even if, even if you are intending to pay your offering or give your tithe, I should say pay your tithe and give your offering, first, it needs to be first on your line item. Well, Pastor, why does that matter? It shows the importance that you feel the things of God and the offerings of God carry in your life. Amen. Amen. I was talking with a young man one time, and he was struggling financially, consistently struggling. And I said, well, when do you tithe? Well, I tithe every paycheck. Well, no, I mean, when do you tithe? Do you tithe after you pay your rent or before? Well, I, I pay everything and then I always make sure I got enough for tithe. So God's last. Well, but pastor, you know, God knows my heart, right? He knows your heart and he knows that the most important thing to that person was to make sure the rent's paid. Now, wait a minute. It's already in the budget. The rent's in the budget. The lights are in the budget. The car payment's in the budget. It's already there. It's already accounted for. It's a matter of honor. It's a matter of my mindset where these offerings of God are concerned. Do you see this? And he said, them that honor me, I will honor. So your mindset when you give tonight is this is not just 
money I'm putting in the container, this is not just a night of offerings where, you know, we're taking up the offering at the end. This is a time that we come together every year and we say God corporately as a body and as a family, we're honoring you. And when you walk up that aisle with your families and your kids and your grandkids or your spouse or whoever you're going to walk up here with, it's with this in mind. Kids, we're honoring God in what we're doing. And I want you to listen to mom and dad. If you'll honor God first in everything you do, God will put you first in everything that you need. Hallelujah. Look at Exodus chapter 35. Oh, glory. And that's why I understand this. That's why it's so important to understand. I've heard, I've heard ministers say this before. And they will say, well, you know, God's not concerned about amounts. I know what they mean. And I will say this. God's not concerned about amounts when honor is in place. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm her favorite. I mean, you know, dad's right there as well, but now I'm joking. Exodus 35, and notice verse 5. Now this is, this is when uh, they are receiving offerings for the tabernacle. And verse 5 says, Take from among you an offering unto the who? The Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold, silver, and brass. Verse 21, And they came every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing. Verse 22, and they came both men and women as many as were willing hearted and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. Every man that offered an offering of gold unto the Lord, unto the Lord. Verse 29, the children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord. Now, notice this this. Notice this pattern. It's a willing offering, and it's to the Lord. It's a willing offering, and it's to the Lord. The word willing, it means, of course, you would think it means voluntary, but it also means this, generous, noble, princely, Notice the, the, the honor that God places on His offerings. This is a noble thing. This is princely. Why? Because you're doing it for the Lord. You're doing it to the Lord. And it, it also means liberal. So God wants me to be voluntary, willing-hearted, as generous and liberal as I can be, and see it as noble and princely. Amen. See, the problem with the church world is we've talked about money the way we talk about sex, like it's dirty. And so people grew up in the church prudish about both of those things. They whispered about both of them. Well, you know, me and my daughter had the talk. Right? Right? That preacher, all he does is talk about money. Instead of giving the offerings of God the preeminence that they deserve. Are you with me? So, does it matter how we bring our offerings? Does it matter to God? Would He give us these instructions if it didn't matter? 
What would he say in 1 Samuel, you kick, you despise, you trample my offerings, and because of that, I can't honor you like I was going to honor you. Amen. The Lord's offering. Look at Mark 14. The Lord's offering. Mark 14 and verse 4. It says, well, let's start in verse 3 so we can get the context. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. Now, you understand that, that most theologians agree Simon was no longer a leper. He used to be a leper, but he had been healed. As he sat at me, he was at dinner, Jesus was. There came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spike nard or pure nard or liquid nard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it upon his head. Some say this was 300 pieces of silver, a year's wages. Now why is that important? It tells us two things. This was a very wealthy woman and a very generous woman. And there were some that had indignation. What? Everybody that was at this table with Jesus was supposed to love him. You, you can read that in the book of, of John. It was his disciples that got upset about this. Primarily Judas. And he stirred the other ones up. <laughs> Notice. And they said, now watch. Now hang on, this is so important. Why was this waste of ointment made? Who'd they pour it on? Jesus. Who'd she pour it on? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Our Lord. The Master. Yeah. Our King. Yeah. Their Lord. Their Master. Their King. Is there anything that you can do for Jesus that's a waste? No. 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 Nothing. But when you don't understand the offerings of God, notice what Jesus said. They said it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Now John 12 says that Judas says that. And it, and it says that he didn't say that because he cared for the poor. But he wanted the money. Because he kept the bag. <laughs> but look at what Jesus said. Let her alone. Why trouble her? She's wrought a good work on me. The poor you have with you always, and whensoever you will, you can do good to them, but me you have not always. She's done what she could. She's given what she could, in other words. She's come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Verily I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, this also that she has done shall be spoken for a memorial of her. Her offering will be a memorial wherever this gospel is preached. One offering. One offering. Given in honor. Jesus said it will be a memorial wherever this gospel is preached. When you give an offering to God, it becomes a place of memorial. It becomes a place where, that you can point back to that you made the decision to honor God there and it becomes a place that you can establish your faith on. Amen. So we're not just giving. Look at 1 Chronicles 16. You're not in a hurry, are you? You're not going to dock me, right? What's that? That's kind of weak. <laughs> First Chronicles 16 and 29. This is when they have returned the ark to Jerusalem. And David had set up a tent and uh, he's working on worship in that tent. And he stands before the people. And... In verse 29, it says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Bring an offering. 
and come before Him, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So David tells the people, notice, give glory to the Lord that is due His name. And bring an offering. Bring an offering. And worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So our offering should do what? Give glory to the Lord that's due His name. I'm doing this in worship. And they're to be given as worship. Not just never approach the offerings of God flippantly. I don't care if they're passing the container. I don't care if you're coming like we do in our church and walking up and placing it in it. The, the issue is you never just walk up and drop it. That's why we say in our, in our body, in our normal giving times, you need to come rejoicing. Why? Because I'm thanking God for what He's done for me. Not just the opportunity to reap and the opportunity to receive, but because of what God has done for me. Father, I remember where I was when You saved me and when You turned my life around. I know how hopeless I was. I know how I didn't have any way of making myself better. But You saved me. You delivered me. You set me free. And I'm bringing an offering. Do your name. Amen. Amen. The word offering means a gift, a present. A gift, a present. You know, a gift or a present for someone should never be an afterthought. Have you ever received a gift from somebody that you could tell no thought whatsoever went into it? I see some people knowing, nodding very knowingly, and I see other people going, mm -hmm. probably because they're sitting by the person that gave no thought whatsoever to that gift. <laughs> there used to be an old guy that went to the church that uh, Michelle and I got met in in, in Nashville, and uh, uh, he loved his wife so much he bought her a vacuum for Christmas. <laughs> but I mean, he also bought some pots and pans too, so... How many know that wasn't a gift that very much thought went into? Daryl raised his hand because he's probably given a vacuum or two in his life. I, uh, uh. And now we know why the bus runs your way so much. So if you think of it as a gift, a present, I'm bringing God a gift. How much thought would you give into a gift for God? I remember when one of our presidents uh, went to visit uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth. And it's customary when you go to visit royalty that you take them a gift. And it should be something very high end, wouldn't you think? This president gave her an iPod loaded with Beatles music. Now, maybe you like the Beatles. I don't know. But here's the point. That's not a gift for royalty. Amen. When I think about a present for God, it needs to have some thought in it. What do you want me to give? Lord, this, this should be every week, but especially at memorial times as this. What do you want me to give? Because ever what God asks you to do, the Scripture says that God will make it possible for you to do it. Amen. So He said, bring a gift. Hallelujah. A gift or a present should never be an afterthought. Oh, I forgot His birthday. I better grab something. Oh, I know what we'll do. Gift card. Right? Money's always nice. Well, I mean, it is. And, and you know, you, you, you put 100, 200, 150, 500,000, right? Any denomination you want in a, in a card and give it to somebody. It's a blessing. Amen. But, but really, is a $100 bill 
something that you really thought about? Or was it just easy? You know why you still, here, isn't this interesting? You don't have any of the $100 bills that people gave you for your birthday. But you got tubs full of cards that your kids made when they were two and three and four and five. Why that means something to you? Because they thought about it. Right? Notice 1 Chronicles 22 and 14. 22 and 14. This is David talking about the plans for the temple. And he says here in verse 14, Now behold, in my trouble, notice this word, I have prepared. I have prepared. I have put back. I've made preparation. For what? The house of the Lord. What did he prepare? A hundred thousand talents of gold. A thousand thousand talents of silver. Of brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared, and you may add thereto. So a hundred thousand talents of gold. Three thousand seven hundred and fifty tons of gold. A thousand thousand talents of silver. Thirty-seven thousand five hundred tons of silver. David said, uh, that's quite a preparation. What, what, was, what was foremost in his thinking? The house of God. What I can do for God. Right? This is what he prepared for the house of the Lord. There's no church body, there's no group of people that should struggle in doing what God wants them to do if the people will learn to rightly honor the offerings of God. If I can learn to rightly honor the offerings of God and, 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 and if a church is taught that, that church won't struggle. Amen. Look at chapter uh, 22 and verse 5. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender. The house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceeding magnifical. Now, we don't use that word a lot. But notice, it basically, it says this. It must exceed magnificence. Why? Because it's going to have fame and glory throughout all countries. It's going to be so great, so beautiful, so amazing that people are going to talk about it all around the world. And he said, I will therefore now prepare for it. I'll prepare for it. David said, the NIV says, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence, of fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Amen. So this house was to produce awe and wonder throughout the nations. This is the importance of our offerings to God. Notice 1 Chronicles 29. Do you think this is important? And verse 1. Furthermore, David the king said unto this congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is young and tender, and the work is great. Notice this. For the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Notice how he referred to the house of the Lord as a palace. A palace. No offering was too great where David was concerned to give God a palace. Amen. Jesus was born in a barn. His church needs to give him a palace. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? 
And notice in verse 3. Moreover, because I've set my affection to the house of my God. Notice these phrases. I've prepared. I've set my affection to the house of God. I've made preparation. Over in Exodus, we read a willing offering, willing hearted, voluntary. Notice how that contrasts to Hophni and Phinehas and what they did. They kicked at his offerings, right? Notice how that contrasts with what Judas and the disciples thought about this expensive offering being given to Jesus, right? I have of my own proper good, my own stuff, out of my own account, out of my own she money. You know what she money is? She don't know I got it. (laughs) That's a lie. She knows everything I got. I have of my own proper good of gold and silver that I have given to the house of my God Over and above all that I prepared for the holy house, 3,000 talents of gold. This is out of his own stuff. That's 101 tons of gold, $3.3 billion. Of the gold of Ophir, 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses with all. 235 tons of silver. So the walls in the temple were overlaid with pure silver. And notice, David did not think that was too extravagant of an offering. Amen. Well, why? It goes all the way back to the lion and the bear. When he stood before King Saul, and Saul said, you can't go fight Goliath. He's a man of war. You're a kid. He's a man of war since he was a kid. And David said, no, 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 let me tell you something. Right? He said, there was a bear that came. And took a lamb. And he said, I killed him. I like that. Matter of fact, I killed him. And then he said, a lion came. And he said, I I chased him down. Grabbed him by the beard. No, first of all, he said, I knocked him out. I smote him. And when he rose up against me, I grabbed him by the beard and killed him. And he said, the same God that delivered the bear and the lion into my hand will deliver this giant into my hand. Who did he give the credit to? Who? Who did he give the credit to? So David stood before a giant between 9 and 13 feet tall, just, just a young man, and killed him. And said, God help me do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice this. When we give in this offering... It's a testimony to our family and all that are watching that our affection is towards God's house. My affection is towards the things of God. And when you give in this offering tonight, it's not about what you give in the sense of if it's from the heart. If I give something that's not of the heart, there's no honor in it. Not because it's not a big amount. There are people that could, that could walk up to any given offering and give thousands of dollars that their heart is not in and it doesn't honor God. Numbers do not honor God. Heart motive honors God. Amen. 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 Notice verse 6 of that same chapter. Then the chief of the fathers, the princes of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the rulers of the king's work, Offered willingly. Do you see that again? Offered willingly. And gave for the service of the house of God. Of gold, 5,000 talents. 10,000 drams. And of silver, 10,000 talents. And of brass, 18,000 talents. And 100,000 talents of iron. Works out to $5.5 billion. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced. Why did they rejoice? 
For that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord, and David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Why were they rejoicing? Because they were giving willingly. They were giving willingly. These gifts were given not for show. Now let's talk about something for a moment before we proceed. What was the problem with Ananias and Sapphira? People will say, well, they lied. Why did they lie? They were given for show. Giving for show. Right? Remember it says Barnabas had some property and he sold it and gave the amount to the church and, and that other people did it too and they saw that they were bringing these offerings and that everybody was rejoicing and they thought, hey, we want to get in on that recognition. And they did sell some property. But then they made an agreement, we're going to give this amount and we're going to tell them that's what we got for the property. How many know it didn't matter? It was your property. If you want to sell it and keep all the money. But they came and what did Peter say? You sell the property for so much? Oh yeah, for so much. Hmm, how is it Satan's filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Now, now, what is the ultimate dishonor to someone? Lie to them. Lie to them. Anybody that you would lie to, you have no honor for. Because lies blind and lies bind. Right? And if you'll lie to somebody, you'll steal from them. Amen. So what was the problem there? What, what did they get in trouble about? People will say, lying. Well, it was, but what did they lie over? An offering. An offering. Why was Cain so upset? Because God didn't receive his offering. Why didn't God receive his offering? It wasn't honorable. There are people that say, well, there was no blood there. You can't, you can't really read that in that scripture. It's really not there. He didn't bring his best. The Bible says that Abel brought his best. Cain didn't. It wasn't acceptable to the Lord. It wasn't, it wasn't acceptable. And what did he do? He got mad about it. Why? Because his mindset was, you ought to be blessed I brought anything. And what did God say to Cain? What did he say? If you do well, won't you be accepted? If you're doing right, won't you be accepted? Are you with me? So the people rejoiced because these were willing offerings. This offering is a memorial. It's a time to be remembered. Amen. A time that we can point back to and say that's the night things changed. That's when things changed. Hallelujah. And so, as we prepare to give, and I say this often when we do this, the offering is the message. What we've taught tonight from the Word is giving us instruction about how we're to do things and how important these things are to God. But when you come tonight, it's a holy moment. When, when you look at any of your giving to God, the reason why tithing doesn't work for some people is that they look at it as more as a legalistic responsibility than they do as honor to God. And when you bring it before God and you say, Father, I honor you with the first 10% of my giving and of my increase, and I'm honoring you with it, God smiles on that. Amen? So if we want to prepare tonight, I'm going to have the gentleman move our uh, receptacles a little closer here tonight so that you can just come to them because you'll be bringing your families and, and different ones. Hallelujah. Glory be to God.
Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Y'all, Dave, you can go ahead and start that. Thank you, Father. And uh, we're going to pray and consecrate this moment to the Lord. Father, we take this time tonight and we consecrate this moment of giving to you. I love you, Lord. And we thank you for this opportunity for your mercy never to produce a memorial in our lives. All my days. And we approach it with the I've honor that is due. Your head. From the moment that I wake up, we realize where we have been in our lives, where you brought us. And we make this oh, determination tonight. That you're our Lord. And we recognize you as such in the name of Jesus. Amen. All my life you have you get a couple of gentlemen at uh, Rusty, if you and Jim, if you want to bring your family to here. You want to be here. And then, so good. Congratulations.
Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your head. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And uh, we want to rejoice, and I want to 
of course, for any that may not have ever maybe participated in the night of giving, the Lord instructed us that, of course, we uh, tabulate as it comes in so that we can know what he did. And when I say that, uh, it's, it's a time of rejoicing. And scripture, we read scripture after scripture tonight that told us how much was given. We, of course, we don't keep names with the amounts. But uh, every year, it has increased. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And so tonight, you honored the Lord with $17,560. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And as we're preparing to wind this service down, and now this is that memorial. Scripture tells us in the book of Joshua, God told Joshua, he said, you tell the people that they take stones and I want them to place it in the river. It was after the Jordan had rolled back and they had went across. And they put stones in the river. And he said, here's why. He said, in the years to come when your children ask, what do these stones mean? He said, you can tell them that's a memorial when God brought us out. This is that memorial stone. Father, I remember on that night, that, that Saturday night of Faith Explosion, me and my family, we came up and we worshipped you in our giving. Yes. Right? And because of that, the way you honor God, God's going to honor you. Yes. Oh, I believe God. Thank you, Father. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, with your heads bowed for a moment, if by chance anyone watching online, Facebook, Instagram, however you're watching us, or maybe here in the sanctuary, and maybe you're watching online, maybe here with us, I don't, in any given service, I don't know everybody that's there. I don't know where everybody's at. But you'd say, Pastor, in this moment of the glory of the Lord and in this time of His presence, I don't know that I'm where I need to be with Him. It could be that maybe you're not born again. Maybe you're not living for Him. Maybe you've backslid. Maybe you're just cold and indifferent to your walk with Him. But with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, Christians praying, if that's you in the audience tonight, in the congregation, if that's you, with no one watching, no one looking at you, would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, that's me. I think I'm, I'm not necessarily where I need to be with Jesus. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? If your heart's clear, then I turn my attention towards those online. If you're online and you're watching and you're not where you need to be with God, the one surety that we have in the Scripture is that He said, anyone that comes to Him, He'll not turn them away. So join me tonight as we invite those maybe online to receive Jesus Christ. If you need to receive him in your heart, everybody in the audience, just say this out loud with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, name I, believe I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Son I believe that he died, that, that he died. was buried, that and that he rose again, and, rose and that he lives today. And, lives today. And, I him, and I make him my Lord and Savior, and I receive him into my heart. In, my heart. in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. amen. If you said that with us according to Scripture, we believe you're born again. We believe you're born again. And God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, don't forget tomorrow morning 
at 10 a.m. I just don't want to leave this presence. But at 10 a.m., of course, Pastor Caldwell will be with us in the morning uh, at 10 a.m. Then tomorrow night, 5 o'clock, tomorrow night, 5 p.m., uh, because we have some restrictions uh, due to the, the, the issues with the pilots and, and they only have a certain amount of hours they can be gone. So uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow night and uh, we'll have another great service with the Caldwells. Amen. I'm excited. What a great faith explosion. Yeah. Best one yet. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, come on, say it with me tonight. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be fed. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.